Get ready, Central Georgia. This is Alex Habersham, publisher of the Macon Middle Georgia Black Pages. I'm happy to inform the community, particularly business owners, that we are working on a new edition of the Macon Middle Georgia Black Pages and Resource Guide. Coming soon. So call today. You need to be a part of this. Your resource guide to identify Black-owned businesses throughout Central Georgia. You either get your free listing and or your ad in the upcoming edition. We try to make it very easy through our book, electronic and digital formats, and social media. Reserve your ad space today. Call 478-464-0074. Visit our website at makingblackpages.com. You cannot afford not to advertise. Download the app. The new Making Middle Georgia Black Pages and Resource Guide is on the way. Coming soon. This is a call to action, and I'm your host, Alex C. Habersham, and I have the pleasure today of interviewing a history-making young lady in the person of the the mayor of Milledgeville, and she was the first uh, elected female mayor, and we're just so happy to have her. And this is Mayor Mary Horam Copeland. So how are you doing, Mayor? Hi, I'm doing well, sir. And I want to congratulate you, first of all. Thank you. For your history of making venture. I've heard a lot of good things about you. I know that you've got a lot of things as it relates to uh, Milledgeville and Baldwin County at heart and particularly education. I read that about you. With, and I'm an ex-teacher. So, you know, we, we agree on that end as it relates to the importance of education. But because you were the first... Uh, female, not just, you're not the first African-American, but you're the first female uh, mayor of uh, Milledgeville. So talk a little bit about yourself, because I know that you have an inspirational story. So let's go way back and just talk about uh, Miss, Miss who, who was Miss Parham, and <laughs> move on up to who became Miss Parham Copeland. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Alex, for having me on today. It's, it's a pleasure to be able to sit down and have a conversation with you. Uh, going back to who I am as Mary Parm Copeland, uh, Bowen High School alumni, uh, finished up. I also was the uh, vice president of my junior class, uh, treasurer in my senior class. So politics was always in the back of my lobe uh, growing up. Uh, mother uh, of two of three rather, I have two daughters and a son. I have five grandchildren and I am married to the honorable and only one, Mr. Charlie, Reverend Charlie Copeland. So uh, that's a little bit about me and and where I've come from. My background, uh, retired from the Department of Corrections, which, you know, I have a history I can go to for that. So uh, I'm just gonna say that's who I am today. And here I am, Mary Parm Copeland, sitting as the first female mayor of the city of Millersville. Outstanding. Well, I want to congratulate you again for that for that accomplishment. Now, talk a little bit about uh, Millersville, Georgia. Uh, just kind of give us a general overview of, of Millersville. I know it's historical. I was reminded by my wife that I think they said it was the first capital in Georgia. Is that correct? Yes, sir. The first capital of Georgia. And, you know, um, when I think about it, it's truly an honor to be the first female to to have uh, become the mayor of a capital city of Georgia. Um, We have a lot of rich history here. And as I share with many, I've seen Millersville through some very dark times, but yet we are here in some very progressive times. Uh, The largest uh, central kitchen here at Central State Hospital in the state of Georgia. uh, And I think beyond Georgia, it's the largest kitchen that you will ever visit up and running right now. we're uh, doing a project out of it where they do prepackaging foods. And so it's one of the projects to help bring Millersville, Baldwin County uh, back to life in our Central State Redevelopment Area. Um, well, well, speaking of Central State real quick, now is the, is the hospital back functioning or is this, are the buildings being used for something else? The hospital is not uh, in function right now. It's just a kitchen that has been renovated and 
uh, brought back to restoration to be able to utilize. There are buildings on the campus that are being leased out uh, right now that are bringing businesses back to that area. And so what we're looking uh, to do in the next couple of years and, and should be sooner is to make sure that it's fully functionable out there on the grounds where you'll see more businesses come to light. Uh, some of the older buildings, they're doing some, some work on them now that are, are not habitable at this time. But in the future, we really hope to bring that side of town back to life just by opening up that area. And if you remember, Mr. Alex, uh, that was a city within itself. I share with people, mm -hmm. it had its own fire part department, its own uh, police department. Uh, when we talk about medical services, the medical surgical building could provide any service that you could go to any hospital and get. So it's a pretty huge area out there. Well, that's outstanding. I'm glad you all are trying to put it to some kind of use. Yes, sir. So what's going on in Milledgeville from an economic perspective and industry perspective? And then after you talk about what's there, what do you think would be the kind of businesses that could and would be attracted to that area of the uh, state? Well, as you know, Millersville, um, we were big with the industry. Uh, we had the Shaw uh, Industrial Building here, which also, which made uh, and manufactured carpeting. We had also, which uh, many, many years ago, the McGall Laboratory Building, which is fully functional now with different services in it that was the McGall Laboratories many years ago. And then we have the old Ream Air Conditioning Building, which also was an industry here, which now uh, is home to the Foss brothers. And what they do is the fire engines and uh, machinery that we see every day. That's what they work on. They manufacture those particular parts. And then we had another industry that had been long left here uh, called, um, oh, it looks like it escaped me just then, but it was also an industrial um, industry that manufactured carpet and, and so forth. And then we have uh, Triumph, which is another industry here that also makes manufacturing or used to do the Boeing 57 uh, parts for the air, aircraft. So big industry, industry city here. And unfortunately at this particular era, I don't believe we'll gain a lot of that back. Uh, we've become a, a retail store a lot here, uh, restaurants here. But what I would like to see is that we do gain some of that industry back because we have still yet people here that are still raising families and we have a lot of families that really need true income and when i say true income it's the income that they can buy a house they can buy a car, a car they can afford to take care of family on versus all of our college students that are here and, and of course you know we are home to georgia college state university which was once the female only female college here so then we also have georgia military college which is uh, another profound school system, as well as Central Georgia Technical College. So there's much need here to bring some jobs back to our community that will make us even economical vile in this community in this time uh, that I as the mayor would like to approach and see for it that we at least get started with some of it. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, so what, what, what kind of programs and initiatives that are going on in Milledgeville right now, because you all are not, you all, you still got a city and a county up there, right? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, you, you're not consolidated at this point. So what kind of programs that are going on uh, right now and, you know, initiatives that, that, you know, you want us to know about as it relates to Milledgeville? Well, I am super proud of this initiative that I have on the table. And uh, I don't know if Ms. Myrtle is around, but if she could just see me today smiling from ear to ear that I'm partnering with, the, with AARP to bring the age-friendly community here in the city of Millersville. And we just got that design. And I'm so grateful and, and I'm just honored that we were able to do that under my leadership. Uh, we're also looking to start a age-friendly community where uh, anyone 55 and up will be able to live there. We're gonna put it in an area close to our hospital, our clinics and the downtown area. So those that would like to shop, drive, whatever, we just wanna make sure that we keep 
uh, our senior citizens viable because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to say we're standing on the bricks of Millersville, Georgia right now. Yeah, that, that's really outstanding. So yeah, it sounds like you're trying to extend me an invitation. To... <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> To come, to come and live in a, in that facility. So really, uh, did, was this your first time vying for public office? And what kind of experience was that for you? That was an awesome experience. It is my first time in public office. Um, a student from Beulah Heights University in Atlanta, where I um, I'm pursuing a master's degree in divinity, uh, about to crank it back up next month. I don't know how I'm going to gain the strength to do all this, but it will be done. Um, so on, on that side of the spectrum, what I did is I worked with a group up there called the uh, uh, National Democrat for Women. And what I decided is, is that I'm putting too much time in up here when I can carry it back home. And so as I continue to work with them, and, and I don't hide it from most, uh, they know my story uh, being a, a preacher myself um, of many years now, that the Holy Spirit prompted me to run for mayor. And I'm saying, no, not me, God. Now, this is one assignment you haven't placed in my lap. However, uh, he kept gnawing on at me. Uh, I went to my husband with it. And when I went to my husband, he said, sure, why not? You know, it was, it was on then. Um, Talk with some of the, the locals, our former mayor, uh, our council that I'm working with now to get some insight and to let them know what my intentions were. And so from that point on, it was an experience like no other. Uh, I share with people the thought of being able to be out and meet and greet people and hear their story and hear what they wanna see come to their community uh, is probably what was my highlight of my whole run was being able to do that. But the day in, the day out work that you put into it is, is not easy. And I share with anyone that wants to run for office, don't just pick up one day and say, oh, I'm gonna run for office. Uh, you need to get involved, get involved in your community, get involved in your boards of, of that nature. And so as we ran, I, I felt like I ran straight down to the last wire uh, on election day. And it was, I share uh, that testimony that at, 6.59, okay, 6.59, my daughter put the last person on the get out to vote effort at the polls, and I'm like, they won't make it, but they made it, and that 6.59 vote helped me win by five votes, so you know, that was an, a really exciting time for me, very, uh, very a guard ordained orchestrated event, and, and I hold that dear to me right now. Wow, so it was that close that close razor thin um and a matter of fact they said six but one was taken back of course because it was an absentee and they stated it was uh from a military person and so that one went to mr thrower but um i cannot begin to tell you the joys of being in public office since i have uh, sat in this position uh, being the uh, nominated for the third vice president of Georgia Municipal Association coming in the door. I'm like, I'm a newbie and you all want me to do, to serve in this position. And here I am four years to this year. Um, June of this year, I'll be the president of my district for the Georgia Municipal Association. So what a run. What a run it has been. Well, well congratulations again. Well, if you would, uh, did you, uh, you know, that was a razor thin election. So if you would, with the kind of atmosphere that we have in our community and our state and across the nation with, with voting and voters' right and voter fraud and things of that nature, I mean, were there any kind of experiences as it relates to how did the election go? Well, the election actually went well. Um, Mr. Thor and I came to terms that we were going to run a civil uh, race and, and we weren't going to do all that we see today and we didn't. Um, as far as if it was anything out of the ordinary, me being new to it, I would have never known. Um, it was just that clean, cut and dry, always the interviews, uh, talking with different people. And I think once they really realized that we have a woman on the ballot running not knowing who I was. So most people just didn't think to put the two together because I'm a realtor of 22, uh, 20 years now. And they didn't think to put that together. So once they realized it was 
this Mary Parm Copeland that the community knows so well, uh, I had the community behind me on all spectrums and I can say black, white, Hispanic, all of them. And, and today they still promote me very well. Well, that's extremely important because I think that's what moves the community forward is, the, is diversity. Right. And having a diverse background and having diverse support and, 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 and having living all people realize that we're all in it together and, yeah. you know, we got to move forward, you know, in a unified manner. Uh, congratulations before I forget to tell you on becoming an age friendly of the <laughs> That's quite, that's quite an, uh, an accomplishment. Well, talk a little bit about your ministry. I heard you say that, you know, you've been a minister for quite a few years and I even saw where you were associated with a, with a church. So talk a little bit about that experience and what your ministry is all about. Well, actually, I uh, am the founder of the Word of Life uh, Interdenominational Bible Church. It's the outreach ministry. I started that ministry in 2013. And in starting that ministry, um, because of the love of the people that I have, the love for the people, it was a very diverse uh, uh, inclusive type religion and, and it still is for me although I'm not sitting in inside of the church walls at this particular time um, I still relate to the parishioners from day to day uh, it's not a, a hour or a day that they can't call and they know uh, Mayor Copeland uh, Reverend Copeland Pastor Copeland is not going to be there for them and in starting that ministry it uh, spread it abroad I think um, probably one of the few females to start a ministry around here uh, at that particular time. And so I'm going to be honest and say at that time when I started that ministry, it was a lot of kickback from uh, the male pastors. But I think they grew to love me and they grew to really realize that, you know, her educational background as far as the ministry goes have brought her a long ways and it helps out tremendously. Even to this day, I, I share with some of them that, um, I try to tell you all way back that Zoom meetings and, and being able to have your church live and, and be able to get out into other people would be needed. And no, we're just such a small town. We don't need that. But here we are today in the 21st century needing to have church via Zoom. Who would have ever thought? Yeah, I know. I know. So it, it was it's actually a building and you just not, you're no longer, you're the founder. I'm the founder, right. Right, right, right. So, so, what, so how long have you been the mayor? This is my fourth year, 2018. Uh -oh. I went into office, um, exciting time. And, and as I stated, um, these first four years have been full down to the wire. My calendar is full every day. And mm -hmm. I never forget, <laughs> the clerk said, oh, Mayor, you'll slow down uh, after January. And I have not stopped running. My calendar stays complete all the time. Yeah, that's uh, what, what's going to happen moving forward? Well, moving forward, uh, you, you know, we're, we're, we're gearing up for this year's election in November. Um, and, and I do believe that I will be victorious again. Uh, I don't know who's running against me, of course, because they don't qualify until August. However, uh, I'm just believing God that I'm gonna walk into this one again. And then in the next four years or so, uh, my goal and my aim is to become a Congresswoman one day. And I do believe the background experience that I'm having and I'm receiving right now from all walks of life and from every uh, city and state, uh, has been beneficial to where I'm going. Yeah. So are there any other programs uh, or community initiatives uh, from an education, uh, political, economic perspective that you're working on or that you would like to talk about? Well, actually, you know, I, I share with most people when it comes to the city, you know, the city is, isn't hands on with the uh, public school system. But since I have become the mayor and, and have sat in the seat for the last four years, we are very hands-on with the educational system, uh, be it the public school system, the private sector. There's nothing that, uh, are, are no bounds or limits for us. We, we make sure we touch the Boys and Girls Club because this is the key to our future. And it's raising our kids up no matter where we meet them, we just have to meet them where they are. 
And right. so we're very, very, I am very active in our community uh, with every school system at every level, uh, getting ready to, to help do some uh, scholarships and things of that nature. I don't know if you recall um, my third year, my second year in office, I held the first mayoral gala here, which was a huge success. Um, no one would have ever thought we could have pulled something like that off in Millageville because we always come to Macon for everything. But we had about a good 400, almost 500 people to attend. Uh, very, very successful. We gave away some scholarships. Um, we'll do the same if the Lord say so. And by October, uh, if we can, and we can move around a little bit more, we're going to have a, another Mario Gala. And it will be more open than what we've had in the past because we still want people to understand COVID is very real and we're still touching grounds with that. Um, the school system itself has done a lot of great things. The public school system, Dr. Norris Price has been phenomenal uh, in our school system here as far as getting everything completed down from our uh, sports complex to the early learning centers, to the well-be clinics and she, anything she needs from me, I'm in her corner and she knows it. Uh, and so when you say the school system as a whole, I mean, I'm there, whichever school it is that calls. Yeah, that, you, can't, you can't find any initiative, in my opinion, more uh, important than education. Absolutely. I heard you mentioned COVID. So how is the community doing COVID-wise? Well, we're doing we're doing probably just as well as any other community. Uh, we focus a lot at first on getting the word out to continue to mask up, to wash your hands, uh, to make sure you're following the CDC guidelines. Uh, we did like most uh, cities, we we did a lot of downtown curbing, uh, simply because I stated we're a college town, and well, I'm not going to say a college town. We're a town with a college in it, and and so we have a lot of students that frequent downtown. And so we, we had to do some mandates of the masking. We did some mandates of our downtown area, as well as our big box stores and um, smaller mom and pop stores. Where we are right now, I would love to see people continue to mask up. Unfortunately, uh, I think most think, you know, because we've gotten the vaccine, it's time to let our guards down. And it's not. It's still very prevalent here. We have to make sure we keep our guards up wear our mask um, and continue to do the social distancing. Uh, I like one, one of the schools adopted a mask adequate. And so what that states is, if you see me and you walk up on me with a mask, please put one on. And I like that, uh, that perspective that they brought to the plate for us. So I, th I think we're doing fairly well. Uh, our numbers are, are fairly low right now, uh, not as low as we would like to see them, but we're striving every day to, to make sure they become now, do you, do, you, do you have uh, vaccines available? We do. Uh, our stores, Walmart, um, Kroger, Walgreens, our health department, you can uh, make the call and get your shot at the health department. Either one of these stores, you just need to uh, call and get on the listing. We don't have the, the mass uh, vaccine site because you all have that in Macon and we're in such close proximity to you all. I would have loved to have seen one. I vied for one uh, with Governor Kemp's office. I called and asked for one here because when you think about it, we're, we're regionally, we're the center location and, and everybody around us, we're like a hub to them. So I would have liked to have seen it. It's, it's a couple of initiatives, uh, initiatives that I press on even now to the governor's office. Um, you have not because you asked not. And if you don't open that door, nobody else will. That, that, that is absolutely. That is absolutely true. I heard you mention the word uh, regionalism, and that's kind of been the buzzword of late. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot of talk about it from our chamber and our elected officials uh, here in uh, you know Central Georgia. So talk about a little bit about regionalism and your experience with that, and how you feel it impacts the entire area. Well, actually, as I stated early on, when we talked about it being that we are originally set uh, from Macon and, and Putnam, Sandersville, Jones County, 
Uh, Baldwin County, Millersville, Baldwin County, as I stated earlier when we were talking about Central State Hospital, everyone drove in to work at this particular facility. Not only that, you're talking about we had oh, numerous prison doors open at that time, but you had more people coming into our community than you probably had anyone anywhere else. Even the ones that live right there where you are uh, came here to work. And when you think about that, you would think that most people would even look at the fact that, okay, because we are central, centrally located here in central Georgia, that even off the beating pass is what I share with most people. Uh, you can't get to Millersville without coming from Macon. You can't get to Millersville without coming from Dublin or 2075. And so that's when what I mean when I said we're regionally located. I think um, if we was to get more economic impact here, it would spread abroad uh, because now not only are the people coming here to shop, to live, to play, to work, all of the above, but we're starting to spread them out further that what Milledgeville doesn't hold. Macon has a wonderful uh, art uh, presentation every week. I mean, every uh, year that I love to come to, uh, there's something up the road and up 75, most people, if you can't get it here, we're just so close to everywhere that it's a one-stop shop. You can get to wherever you want to. What I would like to say is that, you know, as I shared just then, all roads lead to Millersville. And this is an area that you can come live, work and play. Uh, more than likely, I'm gonna be your mayor in the city of Millersville again. And I wanna attract more industries. I wanna attract uh, more economic growth here that will uh, bring all that will feel like they wanna to come to a quaint, quiet place to be able to raise their children and, and move forward. And, and the best thing about this is I love selling Millersville. I love Millersville. We have the best school systems. We have shopping, eatery, you name it, we have it here for you. Uh, and so I, as the mayor, would love to welcome you right now to become a resident of the city of Millersville, Baldwin County. Well, thank you very much. And, uh... I don't know whether I'm going to move there, but I sure do love visiting that. So <laughs> I'm going to continue to, to do that. I want to thank you and congratulate you again for not only becoming the mayor, but all everything that you've done throughout your life as it relates to community improvement and trying to make things better for, for many people over many years. So I wish you Godspeed and good luck on your your upcoming campaign. And uh, so we thank you. This is a call to action. I'm your host, Alex Habersham. Have a great day. Get ready, Central Georgia. This is Alex Habersham, publisher of the Macon Middle Georgia Black Pages. I'm happy to inform the community, particularly business owners, that we are working on a new edition of the Macon Middle Georgia Black Pages and Resource Gap. Coming soon. So call today. You need to be a part of this. Your resource guide to identify Black-owned businesses throughout Central Georgia. We either get your free listing and or your ad in the upcoming edition. We try to make it very easy through our book, electronic and digital formats, and social media. Reserve your ad space today. Call 478 Visit our website at makingblackpages.com. You cannot afford not to advertise. Download the app. The new Making Middle Georgia Black Pages and Resource Guide is on the way. Coming soon.